Hey everyone, in this video, I want to show you how to integrate AIO HTTP into Fast API. So I'm going to be using the code that I wrote in the previous video, where I actually use request to perform the request, but request is synchronous, meaning it doesn't take advantage of any of the async features that Fast API can handle, along with the tortoise ORM that I used in the previous video. So this is the last thing that I'm going to do to get my app to be completely asynchronous. So AIO HTTP works very similarly to requests. There's more code that needs to be written just due to the nature of it being async because uh, typically when it comes to working with async, uh, you have to write more code to get the performance increase. Like you don't get it for free. And you'll see that in this video, I have to write a little bit of code to get this to work well. Whereas here it was pretty simple. It was just one line and it worked. So let's go ahead and get started with this. First thing I need to do is I'm going to install AIO HTTP. So pip install AIO HTTP. And we'll just wait for that to install. And then what I'll do is I'll import it. So import AIO HTTP. And I'm also going to need the Python async, if I can spell it, async IO library as well, because I'll be using that for something. So to use AIO HTTP, we need to work with something called a session. So this session is going to hold the connections that it will eventually use to uh, perform requests. So when you're working with an async app like this, you really only wanna create the session once instead of creating it every time you want to perform a request. So to do that, I need to create the session outside of all of my routes, right? So the easiest way to do that is to create a global variable called session, right? I'll set it as none because I won't be setting the session yet. And then what I'll do is when my API starts up, so when the app server starts up, I can then uh, add the actual client session to that session. So to do that, I can use the decorator app on event, and then this one is startup. So this will fire anytime fast API starts up. So it really should only be once. And then I need to declare uh, a function under this. It's going to be an async function, and then we'll call this uh, startup event. But of course you can call that whatever you want. So now I'm gonna take that session. I'll use global to reference this session instead of creating a local variable called session. And then what I'll do is I'll say uh, session equals AO HTTP, and then client session just like that, right? So what this is doing is it's getting the client session from AIO HTTP, putting it in the session here, and then this will be available in any of the uh, routes that I will use eventually, right? So I have the session here and I need to close it out uh, when the app ends. So I'll create another decorator and this will be for shutdown. So on event, uh, shutdown, and then async def, and we'll just call this shutdown event to keep it consistent. And for this one, I need to await so this one is an async call where this one, it is as well, but we'll use it in a little bit of a different way. So I need to await this and I'll just say session.close. And since I'm not uh, assigning anything here, uh, I can just use the name here and it will pick up the name for the session there. I don't have to use global. All right, so what I need to do now is I need to replace this request with the equivalent version from AIO HTTP. And unfortunately, this method here that I'm using to perform requests right now, it's not gonna work. So this one's really nice because I can put the current time in the tortoise model and then set the function or the method here to be computed. So this will get called every time you look at the object. So basically, anytime you look at you know some city object dot current time, it's gonna fire off this request and return the current time and you'll see that as a value uh, when you're looking at your return data. So I can't do that with uh, AIO HTTP because I can't have async methods be fired automatically through Compute. It. It's a limitation of Tortoise ORM. Perhaps in the future they'll allow that because it is a async first library, but for now you can't have an async function fire automatically like you can uh, a regular function. So what I'll do is I'll modify this just a little bit so first, uh, I'm going to, well, I'll put it under here. I'm going to create another method, and this one is going to be uh, async. So this one's going to be uh, get current time. 
right? And what I want to do is I want to take in self, of course. Uh, this is going to be a class method, so actually this should be CLS, but I won't be using the class directly. What I want to do is I want to pass in the object in question, so object. So this will be a city object. And then I also want to pass in the session from AIO HTTP. So three things there, and I need to make this a class method. Right. So this will not fire automatically, but I can use this in any place, and it's going to be a part of the city model. Next, what I want to do is I want to set up the code to perform the request. So what I can do is do an async with, and this will allow me to use the session here. So it's like I'm awaiting the session. So session. So remember, this is a global variable, and I'll call get, and I'll pass in this information here. Right. So this URL, uh, worldtimeapi.org, and instead of self.timezone, it needs to be object.timezone, right? So there's my async with, and then I can wait for the result. So I'll say result equals await response, and this should be as response. So as response. Okay, so await response.json. Right, and then the last thing is I want to actually put the current time onto the object that I pass. So I'll say current time uh, equals results, and then uh, it's gonna be date time. And then I want to set that on the object. So I'll say object dot current time equals current time, right? So to do this, I'm not gonna add a regular field for current time because that will be added to the database. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this current time that I have now and just return an empty string. So this will still be computed in a way. So when this runs, Pydanic along with Tortoise will take this current time and just return an empty string. And then later, I'm gonna come and call this, which will put the actual current time there. So this is kind of a workaround for the fact that I can't perform uh, async requests automatically using computed. So this is just one method, by the way. I'm sure there are other ways of doing it, but this is the approach that I wanted to take because I want to integrate it closely with the model. And just to explain what's going on here is when you're using AO HTTP, there are basically you know, normally three times that you want to wait. The first time you'll wait is when you get the session. So here I'm getting the session uh, from the global thing. So I'm awaiting getting the session. And that really only happens once. Uh, the next thing that I would await is the actual request. So here, session.get to this API, that gets awaited as well. So it's going to wait for the uh, response to come back. And while that happens, of course, it can go do other things. And then once the response comes back, you can await the parsing of the response. So when this response comes back, it's not actually parsed. You only get a little bit of information about the data that was returned from this call. You have to call some method on response that will actually parse the data. And in this case, it's JSON data, so I'm calling it .json. So once you get this result here, then there's nothing else to wait for, so you can use it like you would in normal Python code. Right? So now that I have all this, I can use it. So what I'll do is I'll go down to my git cities here. And uh, what I need to do is instead of just allowing it to uh, query for all the cities and pass it to city Pydanic like I did before, which is really easy, I have to make this a little more complicated, right? So instead what I'll do is I'll take this, I can just take this entire thing and I'll call this cities. So this is gonna give me the same data and it's gonna put it in the same form. It's basically a bunch of dictionaries that I'll have uh, access to or objects, however you want to look at them. And then what I need to do is I need to perform a request for each city that I have. So when you're using async like this, you want to do something for each item. So let's say I have three cities in the database and I want to perform a request for three cities. Uh, you don't perform a request one after the other because that doesn't take advantage of async. So when you're doing something like that, you need to create a task for each one and then gather all the tasks into one big group, and then you can await that, that entire group as a whole. So uh, what I mean is this. So the easiest way to do this would be something like this. So I can say, you know, city.get current time, right? And I can pass in the city in the session, and of course I need the session, so I'll just call global here, so it knows that's uh, global. And then, 
I can call that, and of course I can await this because I'm using AIL HTTP, and then I can get the result, right? But this is for a single city. So if I do something like this, so for city and cities, if I write the code like this, this doesn't give me any async advantage because what it's going to do is it's going to, I get the current time for the first city and then it's gonna wait it and it's gonna go elsewhere in the app somewhere completely outside of this get cities. And then once that's done, it's gonna come back and go to the next iteration of the loop, await for that. And it's gonna do that over and over and over again until all the cities have returned. So that's not really asynchronous, even though each individual call is asynchronous, as a whole, it's actually synchronous. So to group async tasks like this together, you need to use uh, something called gather. But first you have to create tasks for them. So the first thing is instead of awaiting this here, uh, I'm going to do async io dot create task. And what this will do is it will start the task that I pass in here. So it's just a function, it's an async function, and it will return a value that can be used to determine if the task is still running or not. We don't need to use this directly, but uh, you need to uh, give it a return value. So async.io.create task will create the task. So it's going to get it running. And what I need to do is I need to collect all these tasks together. So what I can do is I can create a tasks list, empty list, and then just append the task there. So tasks.append task. And then what I want to do is after this loop, I want to gather all these tasks together. So I'll use async io dot gather and I can pass the task. So just uh, star tasks. So it will put them in the right format. And then I can await this, right? So now what happens is instead of awaiting each individual one, I'm putting them all into a big group and I'm going to await that entire group. That way it can get all the tasks started before I check if they're finished yet. It's much better and it's actually async. I don't need the return value for anything. So what I can do is I can return cities here. So let's see if this works. So let me uh, start up my server and I'll go over to uh, get cities, execute this, and we see I get the results. I, I still have the times here. And just to kind of prove that it's working, I'll modify the uh, class method that I created to just put uh, hello here, just so you see when I execute this. Instead of the current time, we should see hello for everything. So hello is there and it's there for the rest. But now if I put the uh, the current time back and run this, we see that it's working again. So it's a little complicated to get working and I'm sure there are other approaches, but this is the way I wanted to do it just to keep everything uh, related to this city model that I have here. But if you have another way of approaching this problem, let me know. Um, so that's it for this video. I'll be sure to make more videos on Fast API, but this was like a little mini series that I want to make with these three videos. And uh, before I even do this, I need to remove this. That doesn't make sense anymore. But yeah, return cities, this gets converted to the dictionaries and we see it as JSON, uh, just like we did. So if you have any questions about anything in this video, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.